Hello, AP Physics 1. It's Mr. Ng, and I wanted to walk you through that mass and frictional force worksheet. Let's, let's start with the scenario. So we have a coin that's on this disk, and the disk is spinning. Um, a lot of you were asking me whether or not it's spinning uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. And to be fair, for this problem, it, it really doesn't matter, right? Uh, we do know that the sum of forces is going to point towards the middle. And we do know that there are an upward and bottom force. So let's go to part A. Uh, part A wants you to draw a free body diagram. I think there are two vectors that are obvious, right? There's always going to be mg. So I'm going to make it maybe around four boxes. And then there's going to be new, uh, normal force, right? So here's normal force. Here's the weight. Done. <clears throat> the part that goofed up a lot of us um, is the direction of the friction. So there's two ways to think about it. Um, one, you could think about how friction always opposes the uh, the path of the motion. And if this is a coin, and we spin this super fast, like let's think about the boundaries. Like if this was spinning super fast, where would the coin go? Or um, think about your um, washing machine. Where do the clothes go in your washing machine when you spin it super fast, right? So um, the motion would be this way. That means the friction must oppose it, so the friction goes towards the center. Another way to think about it is to think about that cork that we had on a piece of string, right? For the cork, the tension was uh, make it go around in a circle. But in this case, what holds our coin and makes it go around in a circle is the friction. So here, our friction is going to point towards the center. So I'm going to call that F of R for friction. You could call it whatever you want, right? So there you go. There's our free body diagram. In this next segment of the worksheet, um, College Board gave us all the steps for um, the sum of forces. And really, we just have to describe it. And I think as a whole, it's pretty easy. Like, you just have to kind of walk through the steps and figure it out, uh, figure it out on your own. Um, but let's walk through two steps that were goofing kids. This first one, um, this is not as hard as you think. It's, it's just unrecognizable um, notation. Really, this first step is just a definition of friction. All right? Friction, this is how we usually write it, F of R, is equal to the friction coefficient, in this case the static friction coefficient, times the normal force. So here, it's basically the definition of friction or the equation for friction. But what some of you were um, uncomfortable with is how it's less than or equal to. Remember that um, that the static friction can be less than the max static friction, right? This equation is for the max static friction. So um, I think this is a better definition. This is a better equation. Friction is less than or equal to the static friction coefficient times the normal force. It's just a definition. The next part that kind of goofed us up, like I think most kids got through this pretty easily, but then they got really confused at this step, especially because there were so many jumps to go from here to here. But really the one thing that happened was um, the problem converted from velocity to periods, right? It's a little t. <clears throat> Let's recall what we know about velocity and period. We knew that velocity is equal to 2 pi r over the period. Remember that? 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle, right? So the, the time it takes to travel that circumference is the period. So that is the tangential velocity. This is the conversion between tangential velocity and the period. So let's take um, this step here. All right, let's do this step. V squared is equal to, is less than or equal to mu g r. I'm going to substitute v for 2 pi r over the period. So 2 pi r over the period squared is less than or equal to mu g r. This becomes 4 pi squared r. Oops, squared. I don't know why the book likes the capital 
r uh, over period squared is less than or equal to mu g r r is cancel and then we're left with um, 4 pi squared over period squared times r capital r less than or equal to mu g done and done This segment is what I think is the hardest part of um, this worksheet. Um, we have two opinions. Blake thinks that if the coin is too close, it will start to slip, right? And Blake thinks that it's kind of like a car. Um, when the car rounds a sharp corner, it tends to slip. And the Carlos says, you know what? No, I think it'll slip if it's far from the axis. So who is right? This is very tricky. So here, um, we actually have two equations that we might be able to use. We have one that looks like this. mv squared over r is less than or equal to the friction coefficient mg versus um, the summative equation that we got at the end of that last segment, which is 4 pi squared r over the period is less than or equal to mu g right the friction coefficient times g okay so let's check out these two scenarios in this situation if r goes down then it can make this whole value bigger and then that will break the co the friction coefficient right so really if we use this equation blake is right but look at this one if for this one that's this says that if r is really big, then this is what will break the friction coefficient. So this bottom equation, Carlos is right. So which equation should we use? Um, think back to when I made those mistakes with um, Desmos when we were spinning the little quirks. Is it better to use period or is it better to use velocity? I think it's better to use the period because velocity, if you remember, Velocity changes. So imagine this is a top view of something spinning, right? This is the string and then this thing is spinning. Um, velocity is dependent on the radius, right? And as you go along different parts of that path, it's going to change. So velocity is not, it's not the best indicator for um, speed when something is rotating. So we're gonna use this equation, this summative equation. And in this summative equation, as R goes up, um, the um, friction, the centripetal force goes up. And as R goes up, so the centripetal force might go so high up that it breaks the force of friction, which is on the other side. So Blake is uh, wrong. Get out of here, Blake. Blake. And Carlos is correct. Good, because we used this equation because we shouldn't be describing um, circular motion in uh, tangential velocity. We should be using period instead. Good. Part E is uh, about mass. Does mass matter? And your guess is right. Mass does not matter. Um, but I wouldn't be satisfied by just saying because mass is cancel. I, I don't know if that gets to um, the, the deep physics thinking that I want you to get to. So you're right, mass doesn't matter, right? The, the, it doesn't matter if the coin is super heavy or if the coin is super light. And it's not because, well, I mean, it does, it, you could say that it's because mass got canceled, right? But let's dig a little bit deeper into it, okay? Let's first talk about what it isn't. This is not the friction problem with the candy, right? Remember when we did the candy and it's, we said that it's all about the, um, the chemical uh, situation here it's not about the mass it's about like the friction coefficient is about the actual chemical this is not today's situation instead the answer is very similar to Galileo's experiment where if you drop two things one that's very heavy and one that's kind of not so heavy imagine this thing is like light and it's like a ping-pong ball they will still fall at the same rate at the same and, and end up on the floor at the same time why because even though this one has a larger mg, and this has a tiny mg, um, it also has the same 
um, it also has a larger uh, resistance to it, meaning this has a larger inertia, and this has a little inertia, all right? And that inertia is going to grow as mass grows, and it cancels it out, so mass does not matter anymore. In a similar vein, um, in this problem, we have that force of friction, right? The, um, the force that's causing the centripetal force is the force of friction, right? This mg doesn't even matter. Get out of here, normal force at mg. And this force of friction is dependent on mass, right? It's the mu times uh, the normal force, whose magnitude is mu times mg. This is dependent on mass. So the bigger the mass, right? The bigger the mass, the bigger the friction. But as friction goes up, so does inertia. So it cancels out. So mass does not matter. Thank you very much for watching. You guys have been doing a great job. I'm really proud of you.